Italian cars are known for style and performance, but do those traits translate over to a crossover SUV? According to Alfa Romeo and its new Stelvio Quadrifoglio, the answer is a very enthusiastic C. This is what happens when Italy builds a high-performance SUV. How does it look? Look, it's an Alfa Romeo, so of course it's going to be pretty. But the Quadrifoglio treatment enhances the Stelvio's already attractive lines. Flared wheel arches hide fat summer tires and dark, five-hole wheels that span 20 inches in diameter. The hood sprouts a couple of vents, while new front and rear fascias add the requisite amount of aggressive style. And of course, the entire affair sits lower, which gives the Stelvio an almost hatchback-like stance. How's the storage? With up to 56.5 cubic feet of cargo space, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio could handle a week's worth of bags. And with a standard remote opening tailgate, loading it up isn't all that hard. Storage space in the cabin is at a premium though. The center console isn't especially large, and while we like that Alfa Romeo stuck the twin cup holders ahead of the shifter where they belong, there's not so much as a change tray in sight. Is it roomy? The standard seats have 12-way power adjustability, but are snug and aggressive. A wide center console means that driver and passenger won't be arguing over elbow space. The accommodations in back are not great. Legroom is at a premium, and the idea of shoving three adults in the second row is less than appealing. How does the interior feel? I love the detail work on Alfa Romeo's steering wheel. The leather, Alcantara, and carbon fiber details are beautiful. And these paddle shifters, they're among the best in the business. They're mounted on the column like they should be. They're real metal and the action on them is perfect. But cheaper touches clash with all the carbon fiber and leather in the cabin. Is it well equipped? The Stelvio Quadrifoglio distinguishes itself from rivals like the Porsche Macan with its level of standard equipment. There's very little here that's optional. Aside from active safety systems, a panoramic sunroof, and aesthetic features like a carbon fiber trim steering wheel. That means navigation, an 8.8 inch infotainment system, a Harman Kardon audio system, HID headlights, and heated front seats are all standard. However, you'll do without some more common luxury options like ventilated seats, heated rear seats, LED headlights, or a head-up display, which simply aren't available in the Stelvio. How's the infotainment system? The Stelvio's infotainment system is slow, difficult to navigate, not terribly pretty, and forces drivers to use a flimsy dial mounted behind the shifter. At least 2018 brings Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, although the lack of a touchscreen means living with the chintzy control knob. Is it a good daily driver? All right, so we're back after some uh, technical difficulties, which is why I'm wearing different clothes for this, uh, this portion of the video. Even in its softer suspension settings, the Stelvio's ride is very firm, owing to its thin sidewalls and big 20-inch tires. You're gonna feel every little bump in this thing. And besides that, the brake pedal is just super, super difficult to use every day. There's no physical connection between the brake pedal and the actual calipers and rotors themselves. So coming to a smooth stop, as I'm trying to do right here, is not very easy. The pedal is just too hard, too difficult to modulate. Is it fun to drive? <laughs> this thing is so, so much fun. The 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 generates 505 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque, and it's always, always ready to play. Working alongside an eight-speed automatic transmission that is just awesome. It, the shifts are super fast, it's quick to downshift, it's very predictable, and it makes really good noises when you upshift and downshift. 
But my favorite part is the way it sounds. Just listen to this. It's just like gunshots coming out the back end. It pops and bangs and snarls when you upshift. And I just want to bottle it and just huff it. It's just the most delicious, addicting sound that I've ever heard from a crossover before. How's the fuel economy? Fuel economy isn't that bad. The EPA rates it at 17 miles per gallon city, 23 highway, and 19 combined. Drive the Stelvio Quadrifoglio like we are though, and your figures will likely be a bit lower. How much is it? A standard Alfa Romeo Stelvio starts at $43,240, but the high performance Quadrifoglio nearly doubles that, at $79,795. Our tester has everything but the expensive Sparco seats and Brembo carbon ceramic brakes, which cost $11,500 combined. The total price for this beauty is $84,740. That's still a few thousand dollars cheaper than the top dog Porsche Macan Turbo, though. What are the negatives? The Stelvio Quadrifoglio's brakes are tiring and difficult to use in everyday traffic. And the infotainment system is among the very worst on the market. And if you value style and driving fun, the reality is that the normal Stelvio does it almost as well for half the price. Who should buy it? Customers that value style and performance as much as they value standing out from the crowd will appreciate the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. It's a departure from the ranks of Land Rover and Porsche in that its charms come at the expense of its civility. If you can live with its many foibles, it will give you a driving experience unlike any other crossover.